What is up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Inter Milan career mode as we're now going to call it. It's called the career mode in general but of course we moved over to Inter Milan and uh, basically guys this episode is live because I've taken all of your suggestions from episode number 113. So if you've left suggestions in 114 and 115 I haven't seen those yet and of course this is recorded before those have gone live. And so I've taken the suggestions from episode number 113 and then I've put them into the shortlist. Today, I want to talk about some of the stuff we're going to be doing. Of course, January is a little bit of time away anyways. So we've got a bit of time before the January transfer window. You can see we're in to October. So we have around three months before it actually opens, or two months and a few days. And uh, I just want to show you something quickly, guys, because if I show you our shortlist, you guys have come out in numbers. The amount of suggestions that you guys left me were incredible. So I'm going to go talk a little bit about each player. And basically, I'm going to explain a couple of things that I want to just reiterate points on. Firstly, every suggestion that you guys have left from Leeds, I don't want to sign too many Leeds United players because otherwise the series then defeats the purpose effectively of me moving. So I could have just stayed at Leeds and had the same club there, then bring their entire squad over to here at Inter Milan. So I won't be signing all of your guys' suggestions because pretty much, guys, there was like nine or ten players in there that were suggested that you want me to bring over from Leeds. And in all honesty, guys, if I do that, as I say, I pretty much would have just stayed there if I was going to do that. So... The first suggestions or, you know, the, the first sort of mix of stuff was goalkeepers. Now, if you remember, we actually picked up Alban Lafont way back in the Legion United career mode. If you were there around the, the channel when it actually happened, you will know for anybody who joined us after that happened. Basically, guys, we had Alban Lafont the first season we were in the Premier League. He was good for us. He went to Stoke for 31 million. So he could be a possibility to bring back. Now, you can see that the suggestions in terms of keepers as of right now, when I'm recording this, which, as I said, is after episode number 113, the three suggestions were Lou... Alban Lafont and Jack Butland. Out of these three guys, I really want to try and get Lou back. He's one of the ones that I do want to bring over from Leeds simply because of the fact that we signed him there through the youth system. I think it'd be really cool to get him here to Inter Milan, so he possibly will be one of the ones. But the other guy that I'm looking at is this man, Alban Lafont. He would be the other guy I'd be looking at. I'm not too keen on Jack Butland, nothing against him really, other than the fact that he is 29 and I sort of want a keeper that I know is going to be here for the remainder of this series pretty much, in, and I'm sure of that. So... Those were the three suggestions for keepers, guys. I just wanted to really update you and show you our short list and show you that. Of course, we can't sign any of these guys until the January transfer window opens. But, as I said, we have £200 million and like um, £1.6 million in the wage budget, which is crazy. So, in terms of that one, we have a nice amount of money to spend here at Inter Milan. The two right-backs then, Miguel de Mesquites, again, for, from Leeds. I mean, he came through the Youth Academy as well, so why not? That's another suggestion left by you guys. The other guy there as well was Ricardo Pereira. Now, if you remember, we sold him to Arsenal in order to get Bellerin into Leeds. So, we know what he's capable of doing. We've had him before in the series. It could be an interesting signing, that one. In terms of right-backs, I am sort of looking at a right-back to bring them into the club. If you remember, our right-back currently, if I show you who our right-back is. Oh, by the way, guys, I'll leave like a, a thing in the description. If you're not bothered about the shortlist, you can just go sk uh, skip straight to the gameplay. But if you're bothered about the shortlist, it will be quite a, a long-ish episode, me talking about our shortlist and stuff for the plans coming up in January. And to basically give you enough time to leave your suggestions between now and the start of January, look... If I show you these right backs that we've got, we've got our best one here, Lee's Melu. Now, of course, he came through the youth system by the look of it. He's got a uh, game generated face. He has a one star weak foot, one star skill moves. I am sort of looking to maybe use him as part of a deal. I said to you guys I want to bring in a left mid and a right mid as well. So those are still very high on my list. I'll show you the shortlist about those guys in a second. But in terms of the right backs, guys, I am looking at one. So both of those guys that you guys left suggestions of are possibilities. There will be a couple more in there before January. Don't you worry. I will scout about and stuff, and I'll show you as well. I looked at the world-class players available in the save, and you can take a look at them in a second, and then, of course, use them for some of your suggestions. But in terms of right back, or centre back, sorry, there's four here. Jimenez, Kurt Zuma, Rita Vareld, and Varane. Now, all four of these guys will be incredible signings, but I want to show you a point, and this is one that's happened, I've noticed, on a lot of these players, guys. Kurt Zuma, nine months remaining on his contract. So, we could potentially pick him up for free next season. We've got £200 million to spend anyways. So, my thought process is improve the positions that we really need right now in terms of that one it would be the wingers and possibly right back and maybe another center back then look for pre-contract signings for the next season but i'll make sure i spend all 200 million before i start looking at pre-contracts but if you take a look at this guys Jimenez, Rita Vareld and Varane all do not have contracts expiring whereas Kurt Zuma does into center defensive mid we go i've got Will Jackson here of course we know him from Leeds Lucas Toro was left by you guys before. He's uh, he's looks decent. He's got six foot three. I'm scouting him at the moment, so we'll check check him out later on when we get closer to January. And Timothy Fosumenta, this guy could be an absolute beast. I said I wanted to bring in somebody that could replace Donsa possibly. If we take a look at Fosumenta, he does have a four star weak foot. Can play at centre back. Can play at right back. And 
has medium medium with a four star weak foot, which is pretty good. Six foot three as well. So if I could train his shooting to a decent, you know, sort of level, he could be an incredible signing. So I am definitely looking at Timothy Fosu Mensa. In terms of the wingers, though, guys, Ousmane Dembele is the first one that you guys suggested. And this guy's at Leicester. He's 89 rated, though. Five star weak foot, of course. Four star skill moves. 59 million pounds. We have the funds available. So it'll be question the question is, do we go for him? That's the thing. I am looking at him thinking maybe he does have some great, uh, you know, just great stats all across the board. So, yeah, I am looking at Dembele as a possibility. Center mid wise, we've got Renato Sanchez. We've got Morgan Sanson, which was a suggestion. I hope I've got that right. If, if you left that suggestion of Sanson, I hope I've got the right one there and not Sansone, if that's the other one you were thinking of. I hope I've got the right one. Just let me know in the comments, bro. If I haven't got it right, I'll change it. But we've got Kovacic here as well, and then Golo Kante. Kante also on nine months remaining on his deal. Very good to see. I mean, we've got to look at this as well. If we look at the left-backs, one person was left, or one person suggested Alejandro Gamaldo. He has nine months remaining on his deal as well. Obviously, still at Leeds. So I go back to my point of I don't want to be signing the entirety of the Leeds United team, because then I could have just stayed there. So, it's a possibility, but maybe not. And then in terms of left midfielders, guys, Leon Bailey, Adnan Yanazai. These were two suggestions by you guys again, both of which currently playing for Leeds. It seems as though there's a recurring theme here that you want me to go back in for the Leeds United players, but they are available to us as well. Damari Gray, Anthony Marshall was a suggestion. Of course, left us to move to Celta Vigo. He felt as though his time had come at Leeds and he went over to Spain to play in, uh, in there and play for Celta Vigo, which I have nothing against him. But I don't quite understand why you'd do that when you're winning trophies with us. Damari Gray, guys, as well, could be very interesting. I'm scouting him, so I will show you all these again come January, and you can make decisions there. In terms of these guys, we've got Pereira in there as well. He's currently at Middlesbrough, 85 rated, not too bad. Yannick Carrasco, another suggestion by you guys. I think there was only a couple of players on here that aren't suggested by you, and it's just stuff that I've added. Pereira, again, a calm this time um, I, from, I am not actually know, is it Empoli there? Yeah, Empoli, not too bad there. I think he's a... Uh, He's pretty good. He's got very, very low wage, and he could be a very good signing for us. Inaki Williams was heavily suggested by you guys. Looks as if he's outright favourite to be signed in January, so that could be a possibility there. He looks very good. Joel Green as well, of course, 95 rated. Mohamed Salah in there. Patrick Rose. Paolo Dybala was heavily suggested. Marcus Rashford as well was one of those guys that was heavily suggested. Again, nine months on Ra uh, Rashford, nine months on Paolo Dybala. So again, it could be I sign one of them now and, and wait till next season to sign the other one. Manchester United have four great strikers. Harry Kane, Sanar Sanabria, Rashford, and Dybala. All of which were suggested by you guys. Alcacer's in there as well, 87 rated. I've never really been a fan of this guy. Maybe it'll change if I get him in this series. There could be a potential for Maricardi to rejoin the club as well. He's currently at Chelsea in this one, but you guys suggested to bring him back. He has nine months left on his deal as well. So maybe you could get him on a cheap this January. If not, a pre-contract is definitely a possibility for the next season. And there's one more, guys. Kingsley Komen. There was a few suggestions in there, like the likes of Neymar and people like that. The only reason I don't want to sign them this January is because, as I say, I've literally been using them at Leeds, and it gets to the point where I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to sign the entirety of the Leeds squad. So that's our shortlist. It's taken me eight minutes to get through that. As I said, if you've been watching this for the last eight minutes, you guys are legends, and I appreciate all the support you give me. If not, and if you've skipped, then you won't know this bit. But, um, of course, we'll take a look back at our shortlist in January. I'll add whatever suggestions come through in the next few videos. So then that way, we have a, uh, a full shortlist of players we can try and sign. As I say, guys, I'll show you the world-class positioning now. I did search for it because someone suggested I do that. And you can see, I'm going to scroll down here. You can go through and you can make your decisions on what you want. Of course, some of these guys, you won't be able to see what overalls they are because of the fact that I'll need to scout them further. But in terms of that one, you can go through and you can make your decisions and decide on what players you want me to try and sign from this list. If you want to check it out in any further detail, then just, I guess, pause it. But I'm not showing you their overalls because a lot of these guys may not actually have overalls. So if I'm going a bit too quick, I apologize, but hopefully you can see it anyways. I'm just going to try and go through this as fast as possible. But guys, today's episode, there's going to be two games. The only reason for that is because I've taken eight minutes here in just showing you the goddamn shortlist. But hopefully, anyways, you'll enjoy this. And also, guys, I want to say thank you to every single person who supports me on my channel. It's crazy to see the amount of comments, the amount of likes. I say this literally every time, but it just shows you how appreciative I am of everything you guys do for the channel. Because at the end of the day, when I started this three months ago, I had no idea where this was going to go. But in the end, it's ended up going perfectly well. And there's now, what, almost 5,000 of you guys that watch my videos on a regular basis. So thank you to every single person who does. As you can see, there's a lot of players in here in terms of world-class players that we could possibly sign. It's completely up to you guys as well. I will never make a decision. Donnarumma has gone to West Ham. What? Donnarumma has gone from Arsenal to West Ham. Of course, a former Leeds goalkeeper again. 90 rated there. That's crazy. But, of course, I'll never make a decision without consulting you guys first. So, you guys will have to make the decision for me anyway. So, yeah. That's the list, guys. Hopefully, I didn't go too quick there. Oh, my God. Look at him. He's a regen keeper. 85 rated. Mm, not too bad there. Maybe having to look into that signing. But, he's only six foot two. But... 
Now, guys, we're going to go into the gameplay side of the episode. Apologies if I've uh, absolutely just bored you with the shortlist and general crap like that. But hopefully you've enjoyed it regardless. Let's go into some gameplay now and hopefully pick up as many points as possible. I think we've got a Champions League game coming up here in this first bit of the episode. I think we have anyways. Yeah, we take on Basel and then we'll take on this uh, Pescara team here at home. So, yeah. Let's go, guys. Let's pick up as many points as possible from this episode and hopefully grab ourselves a couple of wins down the line. Ten minutes of me showing you the shortlist. If you sat through that, guys, you guys are absolute legends. You're legends anyway for just watching the video, but if you sat through all them ten minutes of me talking about the shortlist, then you guys are legends. By the way, I want to apologize again. I know I talk extremely fast. It's always been something I have done. So if I'm ever talking too fast, just hit me up with a comment and say you're talking way too quick. Slow it down. And I will try my best to slow it down for the next few episodes. But guys, we're going into this one against Basel. I think I'm pretty much going to keep a um, the team as, I guess, the same as it pretty much is. I am going to bring on Jamari actually, because I need to pick up points in this one. I need to make sure we're doing very well for ourselves in the Champions League. Of course, the defeat we had against PSG just before does not put us in a healthy position. We're sat in second place and there's still a possibility for Wolfsburg to come back and try and catch us, which we do not want to happen. So I need to make sure I'm playing well. I also need to make sure I'm picking up points. So we are going to name a bit of a different team here. Jimenez is going to have to start, I think. Yep, that's the team I'm going to go with, guys. Hopefully we get the win. As always, I'll show you the, uh, the difficulty, the sliders and stuff like that before we go into game. And then that way, we'll hopefully get ourselves a win in the first game of the episode. So let's go. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for the first game of today's episode against Basel. As always, showing you the slide. Oops, I didn't mean to click controller settings. Showing you the sliders and showing you, of course, our team on the screen before we go into this one as soon as it decides to load and doesn't wind me up. There we go, game settings. Here we go. As you can see, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 for everything as per usual. And then the same on our side. So let's go into this first one here and hopefully pick up three points in the Champions League. All right, guys, we're here. San Siro playing this one at home against Baza. I'm going to try and take a look at their team because it would be interesting, actually, to see what sort of side they have, if I recognise any of the players as well. The fact that Celta Vigo could pay £56 million for Anthony Martial maybe gives us a hint that some of the sides around the world may have got a little bit better and may have got a bit more funds into the club. So it'd be interesting, actually, to see what sort of side Basel have here. If you remember, we picked up a 1-0 win against Wolfsburg. We lost last episode against PSG in a 1-0 defeat. So I'm hoping we can pick up the points here and make sure that Wolfsburg can't quite catch us. We need PSG to sort of do us a favour over there because at the end of the day, if they win that one and then we win this one, it moves us a little bit out of reach of Wolfsburg. But at the same time, I would like them to drop points because, of course, we want to try and win the group if we can. But I don't really know which way I want that one to go because, as I say, if they win, they go further ahead or they stay ahead of us, basically. And if they lose, Wolfsburg catch up. So we need to make sure we win this game. That's got to be a possibility. And by the way, guys, one of you asked me to change the kit numbers of the players. I am going to be doing that, but I want to wait until the January transfer window is out of the way. That way, we'll have our full squad in. Can't make any more upgrades until the summer, and then I will change the kit numbers of the players. So leave your suggestions as well for any players you want me to have their kit numbers down as, and I'll do it for you guys in the uh, upcoming episodes. But... As I mentioned, very important game, this one. We need the three points in the uh, the Champions Cup group stage. If we can't get them, it's going to be very, very high-pressure situation coming up later on. You can see they do have Xhaka's brother, of course. But other than that, there's nobody else in that team that I really recognise. Maybe a couple of you guys may recognise a few of those players, but I do not recognise any of them. So let's go with this one. Let's pick up as many points as possible, and let's get ourselves a victory. We've been on top for the early part of this one. It's not too bad for ourselves. We've had a good performance early on in this one. Haven't found a decent chance, though, to go 1-0 up in this one. Jao Mario picks that ball off, though. And there is a chance for us now to go on the attack. Ziturbo's in the area. He gets it played. Ziturbo brings it down and strikes it goalwards. What a save! What a save by the Basel keeper! Oh, my God! I thought that was going to break the net. Ziturbo, man, you've got to finish those on off. Great move. Fantastic play all across the board. That should have been breaking the net. Credit the keeper. What a phenomenal save that is. In That was unbelievable. That will be going through to cells in between the sticks. I've had a very weird first half here, guys. Like, I've been in control. Haven't created anything in terms of, like, a really dangerous chance apart from the Turbo one. And since then, they've had a nice bit of the ball. Nothing really too dangerous for us to defend. But we've been very, very sort of sluggish going forward. And here is Jan Mario now to possibly change that. Does give it off to Raul Jimenez. Jimenez turns, strikes one goalwards. Jimenez, good save by the keeper again. And this is what I'm talking about. We need to start taking some chances because this could go bad. If Basel do get a chance at the other end. Wow, what a ball that is by Jao Mario. It's come back up the bar. 
Win that header, please. Oh, my word. We're not going to score. It's going to be one of those games, guys. I speak about it previously when I've done career mode. It's going to be one of those games where I do everything but put the ball, but put the ball in the back of the net. I can't believe it. The keeper's made two great saves and we've hit the bar. This is just not going to be my day in terms of this game here. And if Basel Nicolate win it, I'll be so fr frustrated. You know what, guys? One of you actually suggested for me to go to a um, the custom tactics and play with freeform up front. Now, I don't actually know what that does, but I guess we'll find out. So we're going to play with freeform and let's see what happens. I can't believe we've just hit the bar there. We should be 1-0 up and we should be cruising in this one. We've dominated all the way through. Let's go into the second half and hopefully find that goal. Jimenez, good turn. Raul Jimenez, finish that one off. Jimenez, oh, he just dragged it wide. He would. That was never going on target anyway. I tried to do a low-driven shot. It was always going wide from that one. I'm going to make a change here. Hopefully change the dynamic of this one. We're going to bring on two new strikers. I'm also going to bring on Brozovic for Jao Mario. New attack in front three. Hopefully he makes a difference with some fresh legs in there. Finishing being very, very poor today. Brozovic on the ball now. Goes past one. Tries to go inside. Has he got the pass on it? Yes, he has. He's gone to a man. Brilliant turn. Fantastic turn. Keeper's made a great save again. What do I have to do to beat this goalkeeper? Oh my God. I mean, the strike wasn't great from Minaj, I have to say. I, I, I don't know what the strike was, but again, the keeper is there to make the save. And I said to you, it's not going to be my day. It really isn't going to be my day. Minaj, good turn. Gets inside. Minaj, this time, get in the back of the net. Thank you very much, Minaj. Says, thank you for the chance. And this time, it's buried. Oh, my God. That was so difficult to find that goal. The keeper's had an absolute storm between the sticks. Credit to him. If he'd have kept me out in this game, that would have been so harsh. But I tell you what, that is a thunderbolt from Minaj there. Great strike. Top bins. Thank you very much. I'll take the goal. But I tell you, this game was not easy to find the back of the net in this. I mean, if Basel come back now and get an equalising goal, I'll be frustrated because they've literally had nothing going forward. We've dominated throughout the entirety of this match and that's a justified and deserved lead that we've got there. So we're into the 90th minute, guys. Referee, I pray, just blow your whistle because this, this is not fair. If they get an equalising goal, I'll feel so hard done by. Great tackle, fantastic tackle by Jesus and we will clear it away. And there is the 90th minute whistle. Thankfully, the three points on the board for ourselves in the Champions League. We'll have to see if Wolfsburg and PSG, what the result of that one was. But we did get the three points here. You can see match facts. They're really deserving of their three points. And you can see as well, Wolfsburg beating PSG. So, I said, if we picked up points, if PSG lost, we go above them, of course. But the thing is, guys, it looks as if PSG and Wolfsburg could actually get, or ourselves as well, to be honest with you, we could all get put into this three-way tie to see who goes out of the groups. If I show you our group table right now and see what it, what it looks like after that game, I'm not sure who is clear favourite to go through in this group. Of course, it's a very difficult group. You have to say, you know, the likes of Wolfsburg, PSG and Inter Milan all being in the same group is not an easy group. But you can see we're on nine points. We still have to play Wolfsburg and PSG again. Uh, PSG are on seven and Wolfsburg are on six. So we still have to play the two teams that we will be involved in in terms of trying to get out of the group. In which case, this could be a very interesting end to the Champions League group stage. Watch this space because it could be that we could go from being top of the group after four games to being knocked out and going into the Europa League after the six. Watch this space, guys. It could be a very interesting end to this group stage. And because, guys, we played the team that we did back in that last game, it means that now we have to play a weaker side. So, this is the side we've gone with. You can see on your screen, Amang, Minaj, Jao Mario, Donsa, Shop. Dodo, Derm, Yao Gai, Murillo, Kamona, and Cells between the sticks, of course. I've just noticed as well, we're actually sat four points behind Juventus and we've played the same amount of games. And it's actually as well, I forgot to mention this, only the top three get Champions League football. In which case, no top four will do. We need top three. So right now we're sat in second. We're doing pretty well for ourselves. But there's still that possibility that it could go wrong. I mean, we need to pick up some points in the league and that's what we have a prime chance to do it here. Um, as I say, we're about four points behind Juventus. So this... Looks as if Juventus are probably going to be the ones to catch this season. I believe we can do it. We need to sign and, and strengthen the team in January if possible. I don't particularly know as in, in terms of what I want to do, provided the pre-contracts, as I mentioned at the start of the episode. But we'll have to wait and see what you guys decide to do in that one. Of course, any suggestions, like I said, that are left after episode number 113 will be added to the shortlist indefinitely as soon as I get around to doing it once I've seen your comments. And hopefully, I'll add enough just in time for the January window. But this, guy's. Very important game. We need three points from this one. We are not going to get a better chance to do so. No disrespect to Pescara, who I think we're playing today. We should be winning this one. So you can see that is how the table looks right now. We're five points clear of Roma. So in terms of that one, 
We're doing pretty well for ourselves and got a little bit of a lead. Still haven't lost yet in the league, which is a very good thing to see. Let's go, guys. Let's pick up another three points in the episode. Good turn. Jao Mario's on the run. Here is Jao Mario now on the ball for us. Jao Mario dinks it into the middle and Amang has scored. We are in the game. Three minutes into it. Jao Mario assists Amang. Amang comes on. Nods it in the back of the net. Three minutes in. We lead here against Pescara. Couldn't have asked for a better way to start. Great way to get in the lead. And as I mentioned, we need to pick up points. What a way to start the episode off, I guess. Or rather this game in the episode off. Because that couldn't have asked for a better start. The keeper actually making a save there. But he doesn't actually get enough on it to stop the ball going in the back of the net. Amang. Thank you very much, my friend. You were a hero on the Road to Glory series, and now you're a hero in the Inter Milan one. Picking up the lead. Let's go and let's build upon this, guys. Into Donsa. Donsa out wide now to Derm. Playing at left back for ourselves today. Derm goes to Dodo down the left-hand side. Dodo cuts it back, and he sees a run now, possibly, of uh, Derm, but I can't quite squeeze the ball through to him, so I give it back to Jao Mario. Give it off to Donsa. We know Donsa can hit them. It's just trying to get the uh, chance for him to be able to hit it. It comes here to Amang. Amang in the area. Good save down at his near post by the keeper. And Amang dribbles it out for a goal quick. Goal kick. Not goal quick. A goal kick. That could have been dangerous though. A nice bit of play. We get Amang a, a chance to shoot. I went near post. Probably not the greatest idea. Probably should have it back post. But still a chance nonetheless. Donta. Now Jao Mario. It's got the run of shot. Nice little run from him. He's given me an option every time. My, both my wingers have actually played pretty well for themselves here today. Jao Mario on the ball again. Out wide to Dodo. Dodo's got the run of a man down the middle. He does feed it into him. I can't get it under control. I tried to get that under control. It just wouldn't fall for a man. Archie, brilliant win back. A man. Oh my word. What are you doing there, defender? Well, I mean, I'll take the gift. That's completely fine with me. He had so many options on and instead just kicked it straight at a man. And that is a fantastic finish from him. Taking off and away from it. You can see I put a lot of pressure on. I don't know what he's attempting to do there. And I suppose you're told to never kick it across the face of goal. But still, don't kick it into the striker and allow him to take the strike. Oh, it took a deflection. That has, has to be so harsh for Pescara. It takes a deflection and beats the keeper. A man will get credited with it, though, so it must have been on target. The deflection possibly was what beat the keeper, though. That's so harsh for them. We're 2-0 up and cruising in this game and don't look like losing at all. Amang has got a brilliant chance now to make it three and grab his hat-trick. Amang, surely to make it three. There you go. Thank you very much, defence. Opened up like an absolute mug. And Amang makes it three. 60 minutes on the clock. We are absolutely battering Pescara here. Deserving three points this one. It could potentially even be five goals to nil this. I feel confident I may score again. It's a simple task. Amang's one-on-one. -on -one. Not missing from there. Thank you very much, sir. You got yourselves a hat-trick. And you know what? He's not even a starting 11 team name. I wouldn't even name him ahead of Raul Jimenez and the um, Zeturbo, possibly. So the fact that Amang's come on and got a hat trick and he doesn't even, uh, he's not even in my starting 11 sort of side that I would put out, it's crazy. Maybe he should be in the starting 11 side. Now Derm coming forward. Looks for the run of Amang. Amang has got so much pace, remember. There it is. One through ball. Amang's in on goal again. This time, though, oh, it's wide. What? How have you missed? How of all the chances. Is that the one I miss? I mean, okay, well, I guess you missed some. You missed some. It just shows you're human. But at the end of the day, I thought that was his fourth there. I told you, his pace is absolutely he's lightning. And he's causing them so much danger at the back. And that's what he's so good about a man when you need the pace. He's there to give you it. Yo, guy with a win back. Brilliant from him. Gives it off to a man again who's caused them all sorts of danger all day. He's just been involved in pretty much all the plays. And Donta gives it away. Then that's poor from me. Tried to force the play again and it didn't really need to. Here come Pescara now, possibly with a chance for the consolation goal. I should have won that back with Donsa. I've read the pass, and here come Pescara. Is this going to be the consolation? Nope, hits the woodwork and goes over the bar. It's been that sort of game for Pescara, and I genuinely feel sorry for them, because Amang's second goal was deflected, and then, yeah, they've just hit the bar. It's been that sort of day. I feel bad for them, because they've had not... I mean, they haven't, been, they haven't deserved anything out of the game. We've been dominating, but still, that would have been a nice way to at least get a consolation from this one, and at least go home with the fans, you know, somewhat happy at the fact they scored. There is the 90th minute whistle. 3-0 on the board. Amang Hattrick gets himself the match ball as well, which you're about to see in a second, I think, if he does, in fact, go and collect it. There is Donta celebrating. And that wraps up, guys. A very impressive episode in terms of gameplay. We dominated Basel. Only came with a 1-0 victory, but deserved that 1-0 victory. This one, we absolutely battered Pescara. There is the match ball going over to Amang. Six shots on the day. Could have had four if you remember he missed that chance later on in the, uh, the game, showing he's human. But hopefully, guys, as well, you weren't too bored from me talking for 10 minutes straight at the start of the episode, showing you the shortlist and stuff, and showing you the fact that, remember, a lot of these players will have contracts expiring in after nine months. So that, of course, 
I need you guys to tell me what would you prefer me do. Sign those players now, or try to, and of course maybe only sign three or four of them, or wait and possibly sign a few in the next window in terms of like um, pre-contracts. But as well, I don't want to sign all the players on pre-contracts because at the end of the day you end up with a really good team like we did at Leeds and just boss everything. So maybe I'll limit myself to two pre-contract signings a season. In which case, I can't go out there and I can't pick up, you know, every single person I want to pick up. So the limit I'm going to set myself, guys, is two pre-contract signings a season. So let me know which signings you want me to make in terms of the shortlist and in terms of the pre-contracts. And of course, I'll make two pre-contract signings in January and the rest will have to come in for transfer fee. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you have, I'd appreciate it if you could hit that right rate, like rating. As always, guys, you guys are absolutely incredible and I appreciate every little bit of support you give me. If this episode can get to 65 likes, that will be greatly appreciated. Doing a bit of training before we end the episode off, I will show you the league table as well and I'll show you a squad report so you guys can check out the players that you want in detail. But you can see... With that game there, we're a point behind Juventus. They do have a game in hand, though. They've won 10 out of their 10 games played, which is absolutely crazy. Just, it's madness. It's an absolute madness. And they are going to definitely be difficult to chase down. In terms of squad report, guys, I'll show you it right now. And you can see I'm going to go for it as rapid as I can. I'm not going to show you it. I'm just going to show you their, um, their stats. If you want to check out any other player, just pause them on the one that you want to check out. And, of course, look at them in further detail. I'm going very quickly through this because, as I say, this is going to pretty much wrap up the episode. So, hopefully you've enjoyed it. And, as I said... Leave me your comments in terms of what you want me to do. And keep leaving me suggestions, guys, because January is still a long way to come. There's still, as I say, about two months to come here. So in terms of that one, you know, we've still got a long way. And there's still a chance for me to add your suggestions to the shortlist before those episodes will need to be recorded. So that is it, guys, for this episode. If you've enjoyed it, as I said, leave the like rating. 65, is, uh, 65 likes is the like target for this one. I will catch you all with another video very soon. Adios.